Hey guys, what's up and welcome back. Today's a really exciting day for me because I get to talk about the ZWO AM5. Now I've shot with the AM5 for a little bit over a year now. And this video is simply what I liked about the AM5 and what I didn't like about the AM5. And this is also a video for those of you that are looking to purchase the AM5. But before we get into it, I think it's really important to discuss why I bought the AM5 in the first place. When I started astrophotography, the AM5 actually did not exist. I was shooting with a Skywatcher EQ6R Pro, and I shot with that for about two and a half years. And I'm a street astrophotographer, at least that's what I call myself, because I pack up all my gear, I drive to a dark sky site, I set up all my gear and I tear it down at the end of the night. Because of the weight of the EQ6R Pro, it was a little bit taxing doing that night after night. I was looking for something a little bit more lightweight. And then the ZWO AM5 came out. But the thing was, was I wasn't willing to sacrifice some of the things that the EQ6R Pro brought to me. I don't know if you own the mount now or have had the pleasure with shooting with it, but it kind of spoils you in a way. One thing I wasn't willing to sacrifice on was the guiding. It needed to guide just as well or better than the EQ6R Pro. It also needed to have at least the same payload capacity. My next mount needed to grow with me into the hobby. It also needed to be power efficient because the EQ6R Pro was actually really power efficient. Slewing it pulled only one to one and a half amps. And we'll get to power efficiency on the AM5 later in this video. But when the AM5 came out, it promised really lightweight. I mean, the mount weighs 11 pounds on its own. And then with its carbon fiber tripod, the TC40, this weighed five pounds. And I was able to put both these things into a backpack and carry it around that way. And I still do that to this day. Also, it didn't need counterweight. So it eliminated the need for me to carry around an 11 pound counterweight, much less store it in my vehicle. And you didn't need to balance the AM5, which was the weirdest thing for me. I was used to balancing mounts like the EQ6 and taking time to do that at night. I actually streamlined my process because I didn't have to worry how I situated my telescope on the mount. It just worked. And guiding was definitely a non-issue. The AM5 guided just as well as the EQ6R Pro, so it actually checked all of those boxes. Now, what are some other things that I liked about the AM5? Well, let's get into it. Now, I really like the fact that I had a spot to mount my ASI Air. ZWO explicitly tells you not to mount the ASI Air in this spot. It's due to the risk of it hitting the mount itself, but I've tried the ASI Air Pro and I've tried the ASI Air Mini and I've never had a problem with it hitting the mount itself. I haven't tried an ASI Air Plus yet. Whatever you do, if you decide to mount your ASI Air in this spot, remember to test your setup. The AM5 has enough torque to either destroy cabling or also antennas or perhaps the ASI Air itself. And because I chose to mount my ASI Air there, I was able to take advantage of the 12 volt throughput right next to the mount. So I'm able to tap into that to supply power to my ASI Air. This made for a cleaner installation altogether and I appreciated that quite a bit. Speaking of wiring and installation, I really liked the wiring panel that is located on the front of the mount. It's in a spot where it reduces cable drag and also provides a clean installation. Assembly out in the field was really easy too. All I had to do was set it on top of the tripod and then lock it in place. After that, it's secured by a bolt 
that screws into the bottom of the mount itself. Then you just slide on your lightweight tripod spreader and it's all sandwiched together by a nut that has a really nice handle on it so you can get the proper tightness. Polar alignment was a snap too. The bolts that ZW chose to use on the mount have a really nice resolution to it. And it's something that you can feel while you're trying to get your mount aligned. And it's a really nice experience. There are also two levers located on either side of the mount. If you unlock them, you'll be able to turn your mount to get your alignment star near the center and then use those adjustment screws to get that accurate polar alignment. But having that ability to turn the mount was a really nice add-in by ZWO. Just don't forget to lock it back in place. I also appreciated all the etchings on this mount. Everything is clearly marked and it's very easy to read. And here's a small detail that I'm all about. It's these bubble levels right here. They're in a spot where when you're polar aligning, you can quickly verify that the mount is level before you start the alignment process. Really nice. The AM5 also comes with this really nice bag that's mounted to the tripod itself. I use it to just throw my batteries in there that I'm using to power the mount. It's really handy. Teardown was super easy too. Due to the light weight of the AM5 and also its quick release parts, so to speak, it was really easy to put everything away at the end of the night. The experience and having that night after night is something I'll appreciate years to come from now. All right, it's power test time. And for this test, I'm gonna just be loading up my AM5 with what I usually shoot with. So Ascar 103, 50 millimeter guide scope, filter drawer, and an ASI camera of some sorts and also my ASI Air Mini. To power the mount, I generally use these hobby grade lithium batteries. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know I'm in the RC hobby as well. So I wire these in parallel and I made a harness for that to facilitate that. And I, I know this is just something I soldered together. And I'm using what's called a Castle Creations BEC. So this converts voltage down to 12 volts and it'll put out nine amps with these batteries. I get about 18,000 milliamps with these three batteries. So roughly I can do two nights of imaging and maybe three if I'm really, really cautious on what I do. But the neat thing about these batteries is they take about an hour to charge and they're really easy, easily replaceable. Uh, to measure the power output, we're gonna put it in a position uh, straight up so it has to slew to level the mount and then also move back to home. And I'll be measuring it with this really loved watt meter. <laughs> Again, if you're in the RC hobby, you'll recognize what this is, but it'll measure uh, voltage, it'll measure amp draw, and uh, it'll also measure how many watts it's pulling uh, as it draws power from the battery. So let's set this up. All right, as you see, I have my AM5 fully loaded. I got my ASI Air hooked up. Got my guide scope hooked up, got my camera cooling down to minus 10, and I have another camera over there keeping an eye on the watt meter. So sorry for the cruidity of this shot, but I just wanted to show you how this is set up. And I'm running a four cell battery to a 12 volt regulator that puts out nine amps and there's taco over there hey taco so i'm feeding nine amps into the am5 and the am5 is supplying power to my accessories and what i'm going to do is just hit home on here from this position and see how many amps it draws right now it looks like it's pulling 6.2 watts 
and it is just chilling and tracking at 0.4 amps. So that is pretty much the maximum of what it's going to pull while it's tracking at night. So you can kind of count on that, but how much does it pull when it's slewing? So I'm going to home it with the uh, hand controller and see how many amps it pulls. So let's do this. All right, looks like it's spiked up to 1.3. was the highest that I recorded an amp draw on there. So pretty power efficient. I mean, obviously you're not going to be slewing all the time, but just wanted to show you how many amps it does draw. So my result was 1.4 amps max, and that was a momentary draw as it slewed the scope back at into home position, which is, at least in my opinion, non-existent. I mean, if I think about the amps that like some of my planes or cars or mini quads draw, I mean, we're measuring those things in double and sometimes triple digits. So 1.4 amps is nothing. I mean, it's totally amazing to me that I can power all these things, including cooling on my ASI camera with, you know, not a lot of power and I have it last a super long time. It's also worth mentioning that with all my accessories on, uh, my scope weighs about 16, 17-ish pounds, right? Ish. Uh, so your mileage might vary. I mean, depending on how heavy your scope is and what you have on it, you could draw up to about two amps on that. But still, like I said, you're not going to be slewing around all night long, right? You're just trying to get the mount into position and that is definitely temporary so your amp draw with it just tracking and whatnot for me was 0.4 so i can't see it go up more than that even with heavier setups all right let's talk about some of the other accessories one thing that's also overlooked is the case that the am5 comes with it's a really nice case and inside of it has some premium foam. It's pretty dense and will keep your AM5 safe while you transport it. The AM5 also comes with a hand controller, which is nice too. For those of you that do visual work, this might be something really nice for you. It's already in the package and you don't have to get anything else. And I can't forget these little accessories. I've never used them, but these are stakes that you would screw into the bottom of your tripod. If you have soft enough ground, you'll be able to stake your tripod into the ground for more stability. So I think this was just a cool accessory that ZWO threw in there, and it looks nicely machined. Just in case you needed to see this, so here's the TC40 carbon fiber tripod. Basically, you just unscrew one of the rubber feet, just like this. And you grab your little stake and it just screws into the bottom like that. And hopefully you can see that this is kind of what it looks like here. It looks super gnarly, that's for sure. But uh, it's kind of a nice add-in, ZWO. The AM5 also looks cool. So I don't know about you, but if I'm going to spend this much money on a mount, it better look cool too. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money and have something ugly, right? Something that I'm going to look at all the time and be like, you know, that's got really good performance, but man, that thing is hideous. The M5 actually looks really good and also performs really well too. So it's just a bonus the way it looks. The aesthetic is really important to me. Might not be important to some y'all, but... For me, I definitely love the aesthetic. 
I love the color. I like the etchings on it. I love the graphics that are on there. And all in all, the shape of it is just really, really cool. Was there anything that I didn't like about the mount? There actually was. First and foremost, the price. So when I purchased my AM5 last year, it was $2,300, which to me was insane. If you're purchasing a AM5 right now, it's actually $300 off. So it's less expensive than it was last year. So if you're looking at this mount, now is the time to get it. Also, it's little brother, the AM3 is $300 off. So it is seriously something to think about. And I think it's because of there's so much more competition on the market because there wasn't a lot of strain wave mounts last year, or at least ones that were as popular as the AM5. Also, one thing that I didn't like was it didn't have any home button switch on the mount itself. It would have been really nice to have that because there have been some times where I just forget to home the mount. And I had to put everything back together in order to slew it back to home. So a home button might be nice. And yes, I know I could use a hand controller or just set the air <laughs> to home it after my imaging session. But in the beginning, a home button would have been really nice to have. Also, I know that you don't have to balance this mount at all, but some type of release on the declination might be nice because I did notice that when I tried to balance my scope in the declination access, I did get a little boost in performance. So I think it's worth it to have some sort of release or some sort of clutch maybe in future models. That's something that I would definitely like to see. All right, what else can I complain about? Even though you had the ability to turn the mount coarsely into position while aligning, I always thought that the threads that ZWO used were a little bit too short. I could have used a little bit more threading in order to make polar alignment happen a little bit more comfortably. I always found myself running out of threads as I was trying to align it. Also, these low profile knobs look pretty cool, but the thing was, was I felt like I could never get enough leverage to tighten down the scope securely. I, I felt like I was always missing the torque that I needed in order to safely attach the scope. And last but not least, the AM5 in its stock configuration, right out of the box, you're not able to polar align the mount at all. You're gonna to have to use software with a telescope or you would need to add a polar scope somewhere on this mount. It doesn't affect me much, but I wanted to Mention it just for those of you that are looking to this mount for visual use. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, let me know down in the comments. Also, if you have your own dislikes and likes about this mount, go ahead and drop those down in the comments too so other people can see what you had to say about it. And I'll also have links in the description if you're interested in purchasing this mount. Right guys, well I guess that's it for this one, and I'll see you in the next. Peace.